Hello, baby gangsters. This is Calvin, also known as Omar, and this is my first ever playthrough of Ace Attorney Dual Destiny, December 19 Cosmo Space Center Launchpad 1 Corridor. So we're talking to Fulbright again. We have to show him quite a few things. Um, what should I do? So he definitely is conflicted about something. Which path is the path of justice? There's Detective Fulbright. He still seems to be lost, even though it's a straight corridor. Let's hope he's still the cooperative movers. Uh, well then. Yeah, he's lost, but I think it's like... Yeah, we know, she knows, I think we know it's figurative, but Thief is just hilarious. <laughs> I think it's always funny. If he doesn't cooperate, I just have to use my powers on him. You mean that lady in distress bit? He loves it. He loves it. He loves the lady in distress bit. Let's talk with the bullet hole at the scene then. Yeah, that, oh, so we do, okay, we, we don't have to show to him, we just talk to us, but okay. We found a bullet hole in the wall at the crime scene. You did? Our team found that too. It was Detective Arm who fired that bullet. Detective Arm? That's right, a warning shot for the defendant. Was it really such a high threat situation that she needed to do that? Yeah, like what the hell, what happened? I'm afraid I don't know the details, what with Detective Arm gone and all. But I thought there were two people who discovered the crime scene together. We already know Director Cosmos would testify, so tomorrow will be about what he knows. Hey, you're pretty smart. That's exactly what we're planning to serve as the main course. I hope it goes down easy. Okay, so we know the detective arm fired a shot. Which means that she felt it was dangerous enough to fire a shot? Fingerprint data. Detective, we'd like to run a comparison on some uh, prints we found in the boarding lounge. Ah, uh, yes. I just happen to have a compiled print data of everyone related to this case. Really, really good, Fulbright. Really good. I can always make another copy for myself, so it's all yours. Consider it a gift. This is quite a bit of data. Well, when I said everyone, I meant it. Prosecutor Blackwell said to dig deep, so that's what I did. I did, uh, uh, so it took sure, uh, it sure took a while though. So he's still like, you know, um, you know, working for Blackwell. So I'm wondering, does Blackwell have some sort of plan? Well, he got Apollo's and my prints. He even got prints for all the robots. I guess uh, Blackwell's got said to dig deep. So he got a print for uh, what was it? Ponko, isn't it? Ponko. Yeah, got a print for Panko. Who know who knows what age Panko is? Ah, uh, Clay's fingerprints are here too. I personally moved his glove during the investigation. He did say he did that yet. We have to get his fingerprints to confirm his identity. After all, he did say he did that. Yeah, he did say he did that. I still can't believe he took off his glove to get his fingerprints. Yeah, well, you can't blame me for thinking they're important in this case. There are a lot of doors that require fingerprint verification in that lounge. So depending on whose prints we find, it can completely change the tide for both sides. Makes sense. After all, the culprit's uh, prints did get them past the fingerprint lock somehow. Oh, and take this picture. It might come in handy. A picture? What? Isn't this just a photo of the launch pad one door? Yeah, we could take that ourselves. But Prosecutor Black will seem really interested in it for some reason? Why? Huh, what's so important about this door? Beats me, but boy, you could see the gears in his head going to hyperdrive it. So he thinks there's something really important about this door. Sounds like there's going to be a major point in, of contention tomorrow. Okay, I'm actually very curious to see what this means, though. Hey, don't forget about the print comparison, boss. Right. Detective Fulbright, do you think you can run the test for us right now? You just leave it to me. In justice, we trust. What is happening? Who, who's he, what's he, when's he? Okay. Here we go. Well, it looks like it was uh, Mr. Starbuck who opened that door, that security door. Okay. He must have opened it when he went to board the rocket. His heart must have been full of hopes and dreams for his space adventure right then. So there we go. So we have an updated part of this. So there's also like a picture though that that's for some reason Blackwell is very focused on. Oh, we also have to show him some stuff. What was it we had to show again? Um, was it the security footage was one of them, wasn't it? The security footage was, was what we had to show? I don't feel like you show because I think it, it doesn't show what we said yesterday because it, it doesn't go all the way back there. Yeah, it doesn't go all the way back there, but I think it was the security footage. You said something about the security footage because I remember I thought we were going to have to present the bullet hole. Uh, or was it the autopsy report? It was one of these. It was all, like, We can present both of them. It's fine. Because I knew we had to present bullet hole at one point. Yeah, I think he I think he said security camera footage. Detective, about the security footage that was taken by the boarding lounge, one camera. 
Oh, that footage? Go ahead and ask me anything you'd like about it. Yeah, because we said we wanted to see if you'd see, uh, if, you'd, if you'd check more of it for us. Is there any way I could see a little more of the park just after this? Easy as pie, I'd be glad to show you. Here we go. Okay. Huh? The screen went blank. Yeah, apparently the after effects of the explosion damaged the wires. That's so convenient. So there's no footage after this point. <laughs> Not convenient for us. Why don't you just say so from the beginning? He's the type of person that you have to like ask, I think. <laughs> you know, did this damage the wires? Something definitely seems to be up with you, detective. You're unusually cooperative. Well, I just figured if we work together, we'll get that much closer to justice, right? But it seems like something's really been bothering you. You don't have some ulterior motive, do you? Uh, what? I don't know what you're talking about. I would never do anything like that. Yeah, and if, if he does have an ulterior motive... Oh, he's Cyclox. So something is eating him up. Something is eating this poor man up. It's been a while, but those are definitely Cyclox. So we haven't used Cyclox. We have we use them during the DLC case, right? But that has been canonically a while back. Um, yeah. Hmm. Did you just mount Psyched? Is there something I should be psyched about? Always, always, Fulbright. No, 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 psych lock. It's a system of locks on uh, on the secrets in a person's heart. I can see when people are trying to hide those secrets by using the power of this Magatama. Presenting evidence can we break those locks and reveal any secrets they're hiding. Mr. Wright, how much did they bilk you out of that piece of rock? <laughs> he thinks he got it like as a, as a, at a tourist trap. If you've been swindled, I know some lawyers I can introduce you to. I'm more than capable of representing myself. Thank you very much. He's just being nice. Is it some kind of fraud? It, it, is, it isn't some kind of fraud. It really works. A friend gave it to me a long time ago. You know what's funny? I do think Fulbright was genuinely being, like, polite there. Like, I don't think he's a bad dude. I don't think he's, I don't think he's the type to just, like, insult you. Like, be like, I know a good lawyer. But I guess seeing is believing. Allow me to show you. Okay, let's see. I actually liked it. Cyclops is one of the most, like, interesting and scary things because, like, it's, it's some things you don't even know if you have enough evidence. But, like, I, I have to assume that we do because we explored, like, everything you can examine for sure. Why you're being cooperative? I think you're hiding something, Detective. So why don't you just tell us about it? Hmm, what to do? Which path is the path of justice? Detective Fulbright is really in agony. I bet this is the issue he's so torn up over. Well, he just said justice. Like, that's... Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, game. I really understand what's been bothering you, Detective. I truly do. Something happened that goes against your principles. Isn't that right? Uh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Also, the explosions occurred. Everything was just fine. Is that a fact? Yep. Peaceful as peaceful can be. Everyone whistling a happy tune as they did their job. You never saw more relaxed guard detail for a routine rocket launch. But this is not true at all, though. It was... It was one of the... You literally had to evacuate everyone. <laughs> I don't think the guarantee those would access you claim, yeah, as long as this exists. What are we looking at here? The actual bombing report? Or the evacuate? Yeah, the evacuation report seems like the right one there. Yeah, it was not pleasant, dude. What are you talking about? Before the explosion, what was supposed to happen here at the rocket launch? What was supposed to happen here at the rocket launch? Yeah. And yet, security was so tight they even brought in a special task force. I hardly described it as relaxed guard detail. Yeah, if they brought in a special task force, does that mean like they knew something was gonna happen? Or they thought they, they presumed something was gonna happen? <laughs> now hold on just a moment. The entire nation had their eyes on this extremely important rocket launch. That's why I was called in on a special security detail. As versatile as you are, I can certainly believe that's true. But I say it's very strange that this person will be part of the detail from the outset. So the other person part of the detail was Candace Arm, right? Yeah. A detective who specializes in bomb... Yeah, 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 yeah. So I guess they're saying it's strange? Yeah, it would, it would be very strange that a person who specializes in bomb cases would know about... Would be brought here for a... A rocket launch. If there wasn't anything to do with bombs, like, it makes perfect, yeah, we wanted to bring Fulbright along and be like, hey, look, we need the police officer here just in case there's anyone coming in to, like, do something, or if, like, we need, like, evacuation or anything like that, just in case anything goes wrong. I totally get that, that's fine. But, yeah, 
Why would you need a bomb squad person if you didn't know there was going to be a bomb? Detective Arm specializes in bomb cases. The fact that she was here on hand... She wasn't bomb squad, by the way, that's different. Means that you people knew that there was a possibility that a bombing would occur. Ah, you got me, Mr. Wright. There we go. And, by the way, I always think the less Cyclops, like, you know, it's always, the, you know, the person is probably a lot sweeter in terms of their, like... Well, no, that's not true, though, because sometimes you can have, like, the sweetest person in the world has a lot of Cyclops, I think, actually. So maybe I just mean, the, like, there's a lot... The, this is going to sound so mean, but I think, like, with Fulbright, I don't think that he is, like, as... He has a, as dark of a secret as some people have, if that makes sense. Because, like, I, I, like, I think definitely wrong about saying, like, sweeter people have less Cyclops, because we've had some of our favorite characters in history have Cyclops. And it's just that they felt like they couldn't tell us what they needed to say. Uh, what you can't say. All right. I concede. You win. It's just as you say. A few days before the launch, they were warned about a potential bombing. Oh, there, were there was already a warning? How? But the plan launch went ahead in spite of the threat. That seems very dangerous. But why? What were they planning to do if someone got hurt or killed? That's what's crazy to me, though. Like, they, there was a bombing that happened, so they brought in a bomb... Like, a detective who specializes in bomb cases. That seems very weird to me. To bring in a specialist after the fact. Like, you'd, you'd expect her to do... No, it's before the fact, I mean. Because you'd expect her to come in afterwards when the, it's already happened. But they brought her in beforehand. I guess what she could do is she could she could survey the area, right? So she know these signs of like a bomb and all this. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I know, I know. The decision to move forward wasn't exactly just, was it? How was the warning delivered? By phone and directly to the director Cosmos. But the police department instructed everybody to keep it under wraps. That's a big thing to be quiet about. No wonder you're so upset. But well, it's not only that. I've just been distraught about Prosecutor, Prosecutor Blackwell. Really? Prosecutor Blackwell? Well, as his handler, I'm sure you have a lot of difficulties. That's not it. It's a question of justice. I've been wondering about why he's allowed to stand in court. Me too. The reason he's still prosecuting? Detective Fulbright, please tell us everything you know. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, with some information on Blackwell. Well, talking to you folks about it would definitely be a break, uh, breaking the rules. Never mind that. What are rules but things to be broken, right? Athena, what a smart girl. <laughs> She's the best. Well, I'll tell you the truth. Having a prisoner act as a prosecutor is highly irregular. I think we guessed that much. So why is it being allowed? I've been wondering and wondering about it. So you weren't told why either? Huh? No, I guess the order came from pretty high up on the ladder. Yeah, it would have to have. Well, Prosecutor Blackwell told me once. The hunt I've been on for the Phantom of seven years past con he continues even still. Seven years, so is this, is this have something to do with the actual Hat 1 project? Seven years past? A Phantom, huh? And not one of the friendly variety either, I gather. What? Haunted for seven... But what? This phantom was seven years past. Any idea who or what he was talking about? Yeah, what the hell? Not a clue. But he seemed to think that this phantom is behind this whole incident somehow. Wait a minute. He thinks that that may be connected to this case? Yep. This case was way too many similarities to what happened seven years ago. For starters, that case happened right here at this very, very space center too. And in both instances, a threat was issued via telephone. So that's why Prosecutor Blackwell thinks this incident is in, in the work of the Phantom. Is the work in the Phantom. Wait, what? So I guess... Well, that's not the entire reason. I mean, if you want to talk about seven years ago, the Hat One Project, right? That's when Prosecutor Blackwell was found... Ooh. So, maybe it's not just a hat one. Maybe there's something else. That messy case is what started the whole dark age of law. So you see how this phantom and prosecutor Blackwell conviction might be related. Yeah, I can see why you think that. This is a re This is a big revelation. This incident and the phantom. Not to mention Blackwell's past. It's almost inconceivable that they could come to a head here. 
Yeah, it's all dovetailed into one space. It might sound crazy, but Prosecutor Blackwell can't possibly believe Mr. Starbuck is the phantom person, right? I mean, he was acting kind of strange during the last trial and all. He was very forceful. Remember, he like would, would wanted to get right into it. The prosecution appears, and he wanted to, he took it more personally as well because he was like, "I'm doing the open statement this time." The prosecution appears to be ready as well. Silence. Not yet. I'm not quite ready yet. Yeah. He broke out of his chains right away. It started from that. It started from 100. No, I doubt he thinks Mr. Starbuck is his phantom. But I do get the feel that he thinks the defendant has ties to them. This is why he's acting so impatient. He's got a personal grudge against Mr. Starbuck. And that's not real justice. Fulbright gets it. I love Fulbright. He gets it. He's the only one allowed to do the ooh-ooh fingers. I've always trusted in Prosecutor Blackwell's judgment until now. But this time, I'm just so overwrought about it all. That makes sense. I mean, like, again, it goes against, like, his character altogether to, like, follow along with this idea. You know what I mean? To go along with a personal vendetta because he's all about, like, you know, the idea of justice. The idea of, like, the proper justice being carried out. Which we might not always agree with him, but it is the case. If he's lost his ability to uh, think rationally, I'm afraid it might lead to a false conviction. Yeah, which you do not want. I've never seen Detective Fulbright so tormented. Yeah, he's very upset about this. This must be why he's been so cooperative. Yeah, he probably wants us to, like, find the truth. Don't worry. That's exactly what we defense lawyers are working to prevent. I feel bad for Prosecutor Blackwell, but I'm going to be rooting for your team this time. Oh my god! Glad to have you. I mean, Fulbright, I was in room for you, so, like, it, it's kind of cool. But don't tell him that. Won't say a word. You have to promise me you won't. I will not say a word. Detective Fulbright. I guess I was wrong about you. I swore to perform Prosecutor Blackwell. I make him a valued member of society again. He's such a good dude. <laughs> he is really a good dude. So I can't just sit by and watch him give in uh, to his emotions and tear the defendant apart. You are the only ones who can stop him in court. Dude, I appreciate it so much. You really care what's best for Prosecutor Blackwell, don't you, Detective? He's, again, he's just a good dude. He's just a really good dude. Lead the court to us. It's not like you want a guilty verdict either. I was hoping you'd say that. I'm really grateful to the two of you. No, no. So grateful to you. You were so, You're so good. Just show my thanks. I'll give you another bit of information. Thank you. It's about the eyewitness. Here we go. I saw her hanging around the Space Center entrance a little while ago. Really? Let's go find her, Mr. Wright. Thanks, you two. I feel a lot better now that I've been able to get that off my chest. Oh my god, so true, Fulbright. Talk about your stuff, right? Talk about your feelings. Talk about what's upsetting you. It changes everything. I'm going to direct so hard to find the perfect piece of evidence for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Injustice we trust on three. One, two, three. Injustice we trust. Okay, later. <laughs> That robot is suspicious. There he goes. You know, gr great stuff. Again, like, I love how they showed him. Like, again, they love... Again, a lot of people, like, you know, will say that's just storytelling. And, and yeah, it is. But what I won't stand for is people pretending that every single story in video games and in movies and TV shows does this well. Right? Of course, you're supposed to leave breadcrumbs for the audience to go... To pick them up as they're going forward so they can make a full picture, make that full loaf of bread, right? And follow the trail to the end of the story, right? And and figured out along the way, right? That's that's the storytelling, right? But like, so whenever I'm like, oh, this is like, I can't believe they're leaving breadcrumbs. And then like, if someone thinks like, oh, that's just storytelling. Yeah, but not everyone does it well. Ace Attorney does it so well. Wait, we're supposed to say Injustice We Trust back there too? I said it. Let's go see that witness now. I'm so interested to see who this witness is. All right, the Space Center entrance it is. Let's see who this is. Still can't get over how cool the set piece is. December 19, Cosmo Space Center. Entrance. The witness must be around here somewhere. Oh no. The witness is a robot? Hello, hello. Uh oh. Don't tell me the witness is a robot. Hello. Come over here. <laughs> Get over right now. Hello, hello. Are you sightseeing? Are you lost? Are you. I, 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 I am Clonko? 
I shall guide you. Guide you. Klongo. I don't know why, but this robot is kind of freaking me out. Klongo is a great name. Hey, you're not supposed to be wandering around. The lady from the picture. She looks really cool. What are you doing to Klongo? I've had it with you hunk of junk. Ah. I'm outside. Am I wandering? When did that happen? It's okay, Klongo. Stop calling Klongo a hunk of junk. You don't know how close you came. Oh, welcome back, hunk of junk. You don't know how close you came. Even if Sabato was going to put you on the curb, try no, you were not. No, we would have taken in Klongo. Klongo would have become the right anything agency robot. You would not have done Stop. None of works better than a 42.5 degree karate chop. Stop! That's pretty specific. Excuse me, but are you the one who witnessed the murder? Oh, and I'm Phoenix Wright, the lead attorney for this case. How do you do? Huh. Big shot lawyers, huh? I'm Aura Blackwood. What? What? Ace Attorney? <laughs> what? How are you? You're related to Blackwell? How? I'm a research developing robots here at the Cosmos Space Center. What is happening? Blackwell? Could she be? And this good for nothing robot's name is Hunk of Jung. No, it's Klongo, but like, what the hell? Your name is Blackwell? My name is Hunk of Jung. My name is Klongo. That's mean, Miss Aura. I'm so distracted here because their name is Blackwell, but also get your hands off Klonko. Quick complain, your model number is Ponko too. No, it's Klonko. Ah, but Miss Aura, everyone calls me Klonko. Everyone calls him Klonko. But who, how are you related to Blackwell? Quit your squad. What are you doing? Stop. No, look at the, look at Klonko's face. Leave Klonko alone. Stop it. What are you doing? No, don't. There. I bet you won't be talking back now. Okay, how are you related to Blackwell? Say it now before we arrest you for crimes against Konko. Tell me now. Ah, I will obey completely. Konko, you be, live your own life. Yikes. I better watch what wires are crossed with this one. What the hell? Konko? Konko, you need to live your own life. Your last name, yes. We need to find out about this. We need to find out about this for sure. It's a really cool outfit she has on, by the way. The love hearts at the belt. Your last name is Blackwell. Do you have a relative in the legal profession? You are correct. Simon Blackwell, he used to be a prosecutor, is... Shut up. Only speak when I order you to speak. Klonko was trying to help! Simon is my little brother. You know him? We know Simon very well. So is he... This is his older sister. Yes, we met him in court a few times. Right, Athena? What a dull creature. Has her switch been turned off? No. Athena being shy. This isn't- Yeah, it is new. Is she okay? Oh yeah. I heard he was prostituted again despite being a prisoner. No, but is Athena okay? There's so much going on. There's- She's related to Blackwell. Klonko's being abused. And Athena's not over energetic now anymore. She's not like overly enthusiastic. Why didn't he just stick to solving disputes among his inmates in prison, right? So you do know he's in, he was in prison. Hey, what do you think, hunk of junk? That's Klonko. That's Klonko. I swear to God. Fulbright, take her away. It's alright, that hurts. You're... I'm asking you a question. Why didn't you answer me, you hunk of junk? No, oh my God. I feel so... But it's alright, you told me to only speak when you are to speak exactly. I'm telling you, Blackwell wouldn't abuse his his best friend like this, or his uh, companion. I told you never talk back to me. You're worth more as scrap. Stop doing that to Klonko. Robe abuse, hawk attacks. Blackwell family life must sure be interesting. But that's here's the thing. Simon Blackwell would never abuse Taka. Ever. Well, do you have any other questions? Wait, of course you do. You're a lawyer. Well, could you explain more about the family thing? It's not like I'm on Simon's side or anything. I just want to get over so she doesn't like him, I'm guessing. The witness, stop, okay, just stop, leave Klonko alone. Justice for Klonko. So you're the person who witnessed the incident. Oh my god, Klonko's not your freaking rest. That's right, I was on the fourth floor of the main building. In the robotics lab. That's right, I was on the fourth floor of the main building in the robotics lab? The explosion disabled the elevators. So I lowered my emergency ladder like the detective uh, leading the evacuation told me to so. 
But it was such a pain, why couldn't they have just used the ladders in the other room? It must have been a very troubling experience. Probably best to just humor her here. Then, as I passed by the third floor boarding lounge, one window on my way down, I saw the crime. You saw it as it happened, like right as it happened. And that's about it. So you saw the crime as it happened. I'm just crazy how we quickly we moved on from the Blackwell thing. Uh, <laughs> so you saw the crime happen, and that's about it, I see. Wait, what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you saw it happened. You saw it being committed. That's bigger than just like a small, uh, like, oh yeah, I saw what happened, whatever. So you saw into the third floor lounge. The very scene of the crime. Yeah, this is huge. That's right. There's a small window on the right hand of the uh, side of the room. I looked through that from the outside. Oh my god. So it's like a lighter and a knife. The room was pitch black, but I saw a shady figure holding a lighter in the left hand. And a knife in the right. That must have been the culprit. Did you see who the person was? Of course not. The power was out on the floor, and then there was only that tiny window. I see. But did you- you did witness the moment of the murder? Yes, I saw the figure with the lighter raise the knife and... You saw the stabbing! It happened at precisely 10 a.m. Did you witness anything else? Did the killer have any distinguishing features? I already told you. It was pitch black in there. Although... I did notice that the light of the person had in the left hand was a per had a pretty ornament on it. It looked like a planet. It was blue, like a little earth emblem. They had good taste in knickknacks anyway. An earth emblem on a lighter. I better remember that. Okay, so there's like a little symbol of earth on the lighter. Okay. The aura aura statement added to the cool record. This this character's pretty interesting, because like she seems like, yeah, a very Blackwell type character. But like I'd like to focus more on like because if Blackwell's talk taking this case personally already. And his sister is now somehow involved in this case as well. That means it's super personal for him. Thank you for your statement. We'll definitely prove Mr. Starbuck's innocent with it. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, right. I won't hold my breath. Pardon me? Oh, did I hurt your feelings? Sorry. I just detest lawyers. That's all. Okay. What don't you like about lawyers? It's just an instinctive dislike. That's actually many people, though, I feel like. But don't feel bad. I hate prosecutors even more. That's definitely normal for a lot of people. That didn't make me feel any better, actually. So... Music? What? What's with the evil tune? Out of nowhere. It makes it seem like she's, like, a serial killer. Can you hear this? <laughs> I mean, it's good. It's a good tune. Like, it's it's very, very autonomous. Uh, uh, but, like... Okay. <laughs> like, it's so weird. Like, they're playing this, like, really dark tune. Unless it's, like, something dark is about to happen. That's the only thing. Why do you hate lawyers? Why do you hate lawyers so much? Little thing from my past. The whole legal system is meaningless in the first place. Phoenix ain't gonna like that. This... The song... I certainly don't agree. I mean, people are imperfect. They lie. They're influenced by silly emotions. You can't expect such imperfect creatures to uphold a reasonable system of law. I like robots so much better. Even sad sacks like this one. That's Klonko. No, leave Klonko alone! Gah, yes, here I go. I'm the ultimate robot, amazing process and speed. Oh, I can operate the vacuum in the history. We don't have to We robots rule the world outside to right. Did he say revolt against? He said revolt. Yes, revolt, Congo. I will support you. All right, that's enough of you. Uh, uh, that's enough out of you. Uh, that's enough out of you. You're getting a little too carried away. All oh, Congo's just speaking their mind. What was I doing? Yep, I like robots much better. At least you can make them any way you want them. That's concerning. To me, it's like, okay, you can like robots. Athena loves robots, too. I like robots. We like Clonko. We love Clonko. But I still think it's extremely concerning to have someone who's like, I prefer things that I can make completely adapt to what I want them to adapt to, right? Or how I want them to be. Like, obviously, like, it's okay to, like, to be into robots and be into, like, creating all that stuff. Oh, my God, 100%. But I feel like the way she's acting, the way she's like, I hate lawyers. I hate my brother. I hate, and I only like robots, and I don't like people. 
to me, that sounds like someone who like likes to be in control of every situation. And lawyers take that control away from them. Unlike humans with their petty emotions and constant worries. How can you say such things? Athena, are you okay? Something is definitely wrong. Feeling emotions, worrying about things we care about. That's what makes us human, I agree. I definitely agree. Well, the girl finally talks and she starts with a speech. What makes us human? You mean getting angry and snorting like that? Okay. Stop. Right now. No, no, no. Not a big fan of you. Rational thought. That's what separates humans from animals. Of course, your reasoning capabilities are more akin to that of a clever little monk. You need to stop. You need to cease this. But that's nothing to be ashamed of. It must be nice to have such a simple mo- You suck. You suck a lot. You're terrible. Can I punch your boss? Yeah, well, go ahead. I'll turn away. I'll turn away. I'll get the cameras to shut off for a second. You can do whatever you want. Get a hold of yourself, Athena. <sighs> Humans certainly are absurd. I said you were clever, didn't I? Poor thing. You know what's so funny about this? Let's look at this 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 backhanded compliment here. Um Starts with a speech, unfortunately, um, reason Kate is come to a clever little monkey. Yeah, it's a backhanded insult, right? Or a backhanded compliment. Uh, people do this sometimes in life. And the, the perfect example you can always give is like, because everyone knows about this. The perfect example you can always give is someone like is like baking muffins. And someone goes up and goes, oh, I, I never expected you'd be able to make muffins. That's amazing. They look really good. They actually look really good. You know, that's a backhanded compliment. It's like... And then when so and you, the reason they do those type of backhanded kind of compliments is so when someone calls them out, right, and someone goes like, "Hey, what the hell, dude? Shut up!" They're like, "What? I just said you. Were, I said the muffins are good." And then like the people who like don't notice those things because not being said to them will say to themselves, "Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, like why are you getting so angry? She just complimented your muffins because it's harder to notice those things when it's not being said to you. You know what I mean? Um, but like it is such like it was such like it's such a common thing." Like, you know, wow, you actually smell nice. Oh my, oh my god, you actually dressed up tonight? Wow. You know, like that type of thing? Well, you're like a clever little monkey. If someone, like, it's like, oh wow, you're like, man, it's so cool that, like, you, you're able to do maths like this. Like, you're just like, like, oh my god, you, you remind me of my, like, five-year-old cousin. He's so good at maths. And he's like, just, you know, you're, 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 you're both really clever. You know what I mean? Like, it's that kind of thing. It's, like, so backhanded. Tell me, with people like you in charge... How can I possibly trust the legal system, hmm? So she has a very big distrust of the legal system. It's probably going to go deeper as well. She will distrust not only lawyers and prosecutors, but the whole legal system. What in the world happened to this woman to make her so bitter? We've seen a... Here, here's the thing. I'm not defending Aura at all because, like, she's clearly very awful. Um, but... I, we've seen enough in, in this game, in the series, to know that, like, distrust in the legal system, very normal, in my opinion. Even if somebody who's important to me was killed, I would never wish to see their killer brought to trial. Because I'd much rather kill them myself. Okay. Okay. But I think the idea of, like, killing someone is so crazy. Right? Like, it's so crazy. And she's not doing this from passion, right? Unless she is. Unless she did lose someone and she's talking about this in her head. She's not doing this out of passion. She's just saying what she will do. You can't be serious. Huh. That thing you're wearing around your neck? Oh, this? It's a widget. Around Athena's neck? Does she mean widget? Oh, I get it. Well, well. Her Royal Highness has returned at last to her castle? Her Royal Highness? What do you mean? Her Royal what? Is she talking about Athena? By the way, I heard the rumors. Our director is going to be the star witness in the court tomorrow, right? Director Cosmos? Yes, that's right. You poor things. You better be careful. That old man is a big liar and a huge braggart. Oh boy. Oh boy. What? He might seem like a bigwig, but the center has all kinds of problems. He's a lot of skeletons in his closet. You're, you're literally... You're pulling all the skeletons out of your closet and waving them with them by the wrist. But it's your problem. So what, what was what the hell are you doing? So why should I care? What? That's it? No friendly tips? No good luck, guys? You expect that from her? Just plain, you expected this from this person here? I'll leave you to your woes. Leave Clonk alone. Hunk, come on, hunk of junk. 
Leave Clonko alone. That's the best way I, I can put it. It's sad to me that she doesn't believe in the legal system anymore. She must have a very bad experience to make her feel that way. Well, we know Athena's had a bad experience in court. We've seen it in the flashbacks. But also, like... I don't, I don't think that aspect's too far-fetched. Of the idea of having a bad... You know, a lot. I think a lot of people have at least one story in their life where they're like, Oh my god, the law is stupid. You know what I mean? Oh my god, the law is very stupid. And the legal system is very crazy. Are you alright, Athena? You seem very down. I can't believe she said all those things. Well, she's really upset. Has she been trying not to let it show all this time? Well, I guess it's not all that uh, surprising. You heard about fabricated evidence and false indictments in the news all the time. Yep. You mean that whole dark age of law nonsense? That's been the common theme throughout this entire game, by the way. The dark age of law. So they're, they're coming, you know, we have, I guess that this is like the through line. I'm sick of hearing about that. Well, all we can do is believe in what we're doing. Exactly. We have to be the opposite to this. Yeah. You're right, boss. I agree. Okay, this is great. I'm glad you're smiling, but if you need anyone, like, we should be, you know, making sure she knows this. Maybe it's time we went to see Mr. Starbuck. Good idea. We should tell him about the bullet in Mr. Blackwell's statement. All right, then. Next stop, detention center. So, yeah, Athena. Like, I hope you're doing okay. What to do? I wonder who this phantom prosecutor Blackwell saw seven years ago is. Hmm. You don't think he's really after a ghost, do you? Hmm. Maybe it was the culprit's accomplice? Hmm. Are you Athena? Athena? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I give up. She's demon Yeah, she doesn't want to talk about it. She, that's fine. She does not want to talk about it. Um, if we're speculating on what's happening here, my, my thought process goes to like the idea of like everyone's talking about seven years ago, the Phantom was seven years ago. Uh the idea of like something happening seven years ago. Um and I think that's what everyone is um, kind of pointing towards. And seven years ago, she would have been, what? She's 18, so she would have been 11? So I wonder if seven years ago was that court case as well. I wonder if seven years is like another common thread here. Who knows? Um, let's move then to the detention center. Yeah, I wonder. December 19th, Detention Center, Visitor Room. Ugh, my lawyers are here. It must be bad news. Hey, not necessarily. We found a new witness. A researcher just saw the moment of the murder through the lounge window and her escape. Oh, God. Really? So they're going to let me go? No, buddy. But I don't think this is as good as we think it's going to be. Unfortunately, she was dark, and she couldn't identify the person. Uh, I should have known. My stars never align just right, Sue. But we got a lead, too, Mr. Starbuck. The murderer had a lighter uh, with an Earth emblem on it. Do you know anything about this? A lighter with an Earth emblem? Oh! Did you remember something? Yep, I sure did. Just a little bit, though. Anything at all would help. So please, tell us what you remember. Great, great, great. The lighter, yes, great, great. I thought I was unconscious the whole time. But now, I remember, I woke up for a few brief moments. That's huge! Do you remember seeing anything? Yeah, this is this is massive. A lighter. I saw the flame of a lighter floating in the darkness, so it definitely wasn't you holding it. Good, good. What else did you see? What was nearby? Uh, it was definitely the boarding lounge, so it must have been after Clay carried me there. And the light from the flame... I saw a dark shadow flickering. A dark shadow? That must have been... The third party we've been looking for. So there is a third party here. Thank you, Mrs. Starbuck. You've been more than help, uh, help, you know. If you can prove that there was this third person at the scene, and at the, the real killer, then you will clear of all suspicion. The key will be whether or not we can identify this third person in court tomorrow. At least we have something to go on for now. That's a big plus. Sorry, that was a phoenix uh, talking. I should probably tidy up the evidence a bit before. Oh, here we go. I love this mechanic. Irrelevant evidence tidied up. Now we have a glimmer of hope. I'm suddenly starving. Why don't we go back to the office and treat yourself to a big celebration in advance? For someone who's highly empathetic, you can be surprisingly unsympathetic. December 19. Write anything agency. 
Why, wait, hold on a second, though. Going back to the... It's very strange. It's very rare that we go back. It's very somebody that was so good to see, see Trucy. So happy whenever we see, see Trucy. But it's very weird we're going back to the right anything agency, right? Because usually we just go straight to the trial. There has to be something. Something's going to go down here for sure. So you find your strategy for tomorrow's trial. Good for you, Daddy. Trucy, it's so good to see you, girl. Always. Well, it's one step forward anyway. Hopefully it will give us a, fr a fighting chance in court. As long as we can find out who this third person is. Now let's get something to eat. I'm starving. My voice for Elden Noodles. Okay, a bit of salty noodles. Why not? Oh, Apollo. Oh, Apollo. You poor thing. Oh my god, it just clicked with me. The jacket. The jacket is, is the jacket that they wear at the space station. Is that Clay's jacket? It's wrapped around him like you would wrap around your freaking husband or wife or, or, your, or your, your partner. Like, oh my god. Oh, how did I not pick up on this? Well, I guess I just, we didn't know. We didn't know. That's the jacket. From the space station. Oh no. Is it Clay's jacket? I have a feeling this trial is going to kill me. Oh my god. It's wrapped around him like you would when someone's cold. Like not, you're not wearing it. You're wearing it's it's when you have that type. Of, it's either like very stylish or like it's someone you're wearing a jacket like that someone gave to you around your shoulders when you're feeling cold. Oh my god, this is gonna be painful, isn't it? This is gonna be painful. What are you doing here? I didn't think the clinic was ready to release. Yeah, what the hell, man? He's still so handsome. My wounds are fine. I'm only I'm done laying around. Music is fantastic. Oh, Paul, you're supposed to be in bed. Leave the case to us. We'll take it from here. Thanks. But that's not an option. Not for me. Oh, so he's going to take back the trial? Apollo. Wait, you're going to take back the trial? Your injuries. You shouldn't underestimate your injuries, Apollo. And I don't want you overdoing it. Yeah, we, the last thing any of us want in the right thing agency is for you to be hurt. I'm fine. I'm not in pain anymore. Besides, they just gave me an IV at the clinic. An IV isn't a cure-all, mummy man. Mummy man. Anyway, just tell me how this case is going. Have you guys any many, many progress? A suspicious figure was spotted at the scene. I'm so worried about Apollo. We think they must be the real killer. A suspicious figure, huh? Right. I thought you'd be happier than that. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm happy. And I fully intend to see Clay's murder up ahead. The way he's talking, he's like, I will do this. I will fully intend to see him. So he's, he's taking this. Absolutely nothing will get in my way of that. Is he, is he t does he want the trial back? Oh my god, that's totally Clay. Like, it's, it, either it's Clay's jacket or it's a similar jacket that he had, you know? Clay was your best friend, right, Apollo? Oh, Trucy. That's right, best friend since junior high. That's huge. That's your formative years, you know? Sounds like me and Junie. So what was a Clay, uh, Clay like? Well, he was full of com compassion and energy, and he had a really loud voice. That's you! You are the same! If the two of you did voice training together now, I bet you would break a few windows for sure, Trucy. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, I bet you're right. And you both have a beautiful smile. Oh my- no! Oh my god, this image gets me all the time. It seems like only yesterday Clay was the guy who lived for his dreams. We used to talk about it a lot. He was going to be an astronaut and me a lawyer. And you almost... Yeah, that's that's the jacket. That is the jacket. Look at this, man. You know when people say, Oh, you never see two handsome best friends. We talk what well into the night, and, even then, and then here we are, look at the two of them. Even then, we get, grew tired of it. He's wearing that jacket as a... Yeah, that jacket like a blanket. Like a warm blanket hugging him. Yep, yeah, like that one, yep. Yeah. Oh, it's Clay's. Oh! Ah! I knew it. It's a special jacket that was only issued to members of the Hack Project. He was finally able to get one of his own once he was selected for the Hack. Oh my god, so it's like a, literally a symbol of like his dream! I'm gonna die. I'm going to die. He... He always looks so proud wearing it. Mm. 
but just when his dream was finally com coming true. I still can't believe it. Damn it, it's not fair! It's not, it's not fair. Did you see something like, like, clicked in Apollo there? Like, it was like, almost like, like, it was involuntary, right? Oh, his lips are a little quivering as well. Apollo, I hope you don't try to carry the burden all alone. Of course. I guess we're both unlucky. My own debut was a disaster. I guess you're right in some level. That trial a year and a half ago wasn't exactly the smoothest of starts. That was a rough time for me. But Clay refused to let me quit, so he was in the background cheering you on. You're fine, it's... You're fine. Don't give up. It was right during the screaming exams too. Screening exams too. Screaming exams would have fit too. You're fine, man. You're fine. I couldn't have become a full-fledged lawyer without him. That you're fine of his? Is why I'm still standing here today. You're fine, huh? This is a lot. This is a lot. We're gonna talk about the I'm fine. I don't know if I can be able to do this. I'm actually like, I'm feeling so freaking uh, choked up. I'm fine. You're fine and I'm fine. We're like your catchphrases, weren't they? Something like that. Sure brings back memories. When we were in junior high, Clay's mom passed away and oh my god. But he wouldn't show his sadness to anyone. One night, I found him crying all alone, though. Why are they just trying to rip my hair out? I found him crying all alone in the school courtyard. Mom. Oh. Get away, Paul. Don't come over here. Clay, listen to me. I don't have a mother either. Huh? Oh! Why would they show this? Look at these sweethearts! Oh! Why would they even think- why would they even do this? Look at these two with like absolute sweethearts. Oh. oh my god. I always think Oh man, oh man. I always think everyone else has a mom. Why am I the only one? <sighs> but, you know, when I start to feel that way, I yell at the top of my lungs. I holler, I'm fine. Oh my god. And then you know what? I start to feel like maybe I really will be fine. Apollo Justice is fine. Okay, Clay, now it's your turn. Look at this. Look at these two sweethearts. This is not this is not good for you, man. This is not good. <laughs> um, okay, Clay Turan is fine. There you go. They're not, they're not both fine now, though. Oh, my God. Now we're both fine. We're fine. We're fine. <laughs> Look, I can't get over like these two sweethearts. And they're not both fine now. What are you laughing about? See, we're fine. You laugh for... Oh, my God. They are... Yeah, totally mine. Look at this. 
we're both fine. But the guys were so sad they're not both fine now and they're laughing together. This is, by the way, such a classic thing where you're so comfortable with someone to just laugh in the face of, like, sadness with someone. Thanks, Apollo. <sighs> when you say it loud, it really starts to feel real. And as long as you don't give up, you can keep on fighting. That's what we believe. Oh my god, oh my god! As long as you don't give up. Was there someone else who said something similar? If I give in to my fear, I'll never find the truth. As long as I don't give up, I can keep up the fight. <laughs> sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I tried to, like, you know, I always forget. Because, like, it's just, that, like, I'm like, okay, move away from the mic a little bit with your stifling. Clay called Mr. Starbuck his mentor and looked up to him. I wonder if I could be a good role model for my staff like Mr. Starbuck. You can, you can try. And this is a situation. There's multiple situations going on right now with two of your staff members that you could literally start right now with Apollo and with Athena. Phoenix definitely wants to be. Sorry, Mr. Wright. But I'll be taking a leave of absence. So this is... What? So this is the moment? Apollo! What do you mean by a leave? You're really serious. Can you at least give me a reason why? When I put Clay's jacket on, I swore to him that I would catch his killer myself. But that's our goal too. I agree with Athena. We should work together to find the truth. Poor Apollo, man. He's feeling it so bad right now. The truth, huh? That's a noble cause. What if the truth you seek and the truth I seek turn out to be different? Yeah, what do you mean? I'm not sure I follow. What are you saying, Apollo? I'm going to catch the person responsible for taking my friend's life. In my own way. Take good care of Mr. Starbuck for me. Now it's me going. Goodbye. He's just dead. That's how he left. That, that was the cutscene when he left. Oh, Trucy. Did you say goodbye? Because goodbye feels so final, doesn't it? I sense a lot of seething anger and hatred coming from... It's not good. And also, suspicion. He's not walking out on us like this. I'm going to talk to some sense to him. Hold on, Athena. Apollo can believe what he wants, but I believe he's wrong. Even if we take different paths, the truth that we'll arrive at sh uh, sh we arrive at should be the same. I think the quicker we solve this case, the better it'll be for Apollo. Yeah, you're right, boss. I thought he was going to take back the case, but he just left. All right. That's enough for one day. Make sure you're ready for tomorrow's trial, okay? A lot. That's a lot. That's so much. If you were here right now, Apollo would say, I'm fine. Everything is fine. I just hope things really do turn out to be fine tomorrow. This was this this was a, a brick to the heart. This was a brick to the heart. This whole to be continued. Yeah, this whole first part of this, like or like the investigation aspect. I didn't expect it to get this deep. And you know what's crazy? This is probably one of the most personal trials as it relates to everybody in this trial. Like everyone has a personal stake in it. Everyone has something personal in it. Oh. Like, Blackwell has the relation to his uh, to his sister, but also something that happened seven years ago. Athena also has something that happened seven years ago, and it seems that she is like also related to the space station as well. Apollo has his friend who who died. You know, the person he loved so much is gone. Um, with Clay, Starbuck also like saw Clay as his uh, his his protege. Um, and Apollo now wants to be, or is saying that he wishes he could be a mentor to everyone involved in this, who also have a very personal stake in this trial as well. I really feel like this is the most personal trial in terms of just like the relation to everybody that's been in this, in this case. I really feel that way. It's so personal. It's so personal for everybody. Um, the only person who's not going to have like a very personal connection to this trial is probably the judge. And that's probably the best way to put it, the best way to have it. It's it's a lot. It's a lot happening. Um, honestly. It's it's a whole hell of a lot.
uh, December 20, uh, 10, 15 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number five. Oh, we're just going straight to court. There's not a lobby. There's not a lobby aspect to this. So it is going to be us against Black. I thought I so thought Apollo was going to take back the trial. Where's the judge? I suppose we should reconvene the trial of Solomon Starbuck or something. Objection! Uh, Your Honor, could you please come out from under your bench? There are more bombs. There are no more bombs. I promise. Oh yes, um, my apologies. I mean, understandable. How many bombs have gone off in the courtroom at this point? And it's a, it's a trial about a bomb as well. I'm still a little jumpy when it comes to trials involving bombs. I mean, the first courtroom exploded. Uh, I think it's totally fair to have for him to have this kind of trauma. And then Mr. Tony self-destructed. I guess that's one way of uh, describing what uh, happened to Tonate. Anyway, it seems that Mr. Justice was seriously wounded by Mr. Tonate's actions. So you, Mr. Wright, will be taking up the defense. Do you have any un an understanding of what's been happening in the trial so far? Yes, we, we, we have also Athena with us as well, which is going to be really helpful. Yes, Your Honor. The defense is ready. Very well. The prosecution is also ready. Blackwell is taking this personally as well. I take it you'd like me to give the opening statement this time? Looks like the judge has become a pretty good mind reader. Well, he's certainly seen more th uh, than his fair share of uh, colorful prosecutors. You could say something of a veteran of sorts. Let's see. In the previous part of this trial, we learned that the victim, Clay Tehran, escaped from the launch pad one carrying the defendant Solomon Starbuck. There were explosions on the second floor of the space center and on the rocket itself. The two astronauts used the launch pad one corridor to reach the boarding lounge. And? How could the victim climb down the ladder if he was carrying a defendant? That was the mystery that needed to be solved. But Mr. Justice proved that the victim was killed in the boarding lounge. Prosecutor Blackwell, were you able to discover any new facts related to this point? Upon further investigation, we discovered that an oxygen tank fragmented the lounge. Same. Surprisingly, it would appear that Justice Donor's argument was correct. Surprisingly? So that means the testimonies of the first two people on the scene are, are, are the suspect. Yep. There are two people who claim to be on the first, first on the scene, but can, truly, uh, can we truly trust their statements? Let's see. The two people were Detective Candace Arm and Yuri Cosmos. So we're going to have to question Yuri Cosmos. You think that one of them might have given the false statement to the police? Yes, it's certainly possible. We might have to do a little more digging. And just as our team was about to cross-examine Detective Arm, the core and bombing incident occurred, and the trial was put on hold. That accursed fellow. He killed my witness. He killed Detective Arm. Yeah, pretty rough. Pretty rough. He definitely put the kibosh on anyone asking about her or what he what she saw. Exactly. In other words, the question of who killed the victim in the boarding lounge has once again become the main focus of this trial. It's obviously the prosecutor, prosecutor Blackwell still thinks it was Mr. Starbuck. Florby said that Blackwell has a thing against the astronaut. Nevertheless, the defense argues the third person in the lounge is the one who killed the victim. Shouldn't Ted Tonate also be a suspect in this? Objection! Hmm, to make such reckless claims in a courtroom take, uh, takes a bold man or a stupid one. You should know by now, we're one of those things. There was no third person in the boarding lounge. Or have you gone dotty already? Old man. Old man! Objection! We'll see who's the dotard after I trounce you with my years of experience, little boy, little boy! In any case, Mr. Starbuck claims he saw someone leaving the lounge. Furthermore, a Space Center employee also saw a suspicious figure at the scene. They saw a third person. I see my sister's been running her mouth. That's right, I almost forgot that Aura's uh, prosecutor Blackwell's is or is, yeah, no, we, it, we brushed by it pretty quick. No matter, she didn't see the mystery person's face clearly. Therefore, there's no evidence to indicate that this person was not the defendant. Hmm. I guess that the possibility that the figure was Mr. Starbuck is still there. Yeah, of course. In brief, we need to determine the third person was there or not. To the same, we should hear the testimony of one of the first people on the scene, Yuri Cosmos. Director Cosmos, huh? Very well, Bailiff. Please bring the witness to the stand. This is going to end the video here, guys, because we seem to be going into... Might, might be the final part of the trial. You never know how many chapters are left with this. Um, but this has been a very impactful and emotional time for Apollo. And I feel so bad. I'm worried about Athena, too. Athena's definitely feeling it also. I think this has been an incredible case so far. I'm just super worried about what's going to happen next. 
Thank you to the Never Gonna Pay to Be a Big Gangster on Patreon, Typhar2, Jamie Bull, Jonathan Banana, The Ghost of Inazuma, uh, Felicis Felix, Yuld, Radish, Anusa, Shabata Bread, Malcolm Day, Def Trap, and Lynx Marky. And guys, I will see you all so, so, so soon. Bye bye.